Welcome back, world, to another episode of the Hollywood Kickbacks Podcast. I'm your co-host with the co-most, Alex Millers. Join with me, as always, is Will Lopez. Will, how's it going? Yes, sir. We are back with another episode and our third meeting in person. We are one, one, and one on the <laughs> for a record for our live stream meetup. So we lost the first time to yes, Arsenal. Yes. We beat United. We saw that schlacking live uh when we beat them 3-0 at old trafford yes sir still vibing off of that yeah and then we drew to chelsea today 4-4 that's crazy and then the one uh the one uh episode where we did win and had a good time and got faded and had a great ass time we had to scrap that one yeah we did uh we well, <laughs> the I, only one we won <laughs> the, the only yeah we 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 uh had corrupted footage from yes. our badass 6k camera that we used yes, for this but i kind of still don't know how to use it but i found out how to use it and now we use it for this podcast and now we're here and now now we're busting right yes sir so will what are your thoughts on the win oh no on the win a draw man it was a draw it felt like we were winning till the, till the end it did right till the end it, it was a hell of a game dude like it was just action action goal goal there was four goals in the fucking first half yeah. You know what I mean? That and was then a lot. The rain came down, made things dramatic, and uh, it was a dramatic ending in a tie. You know, it was good that we were probably not drinking for the first half <laughs> uh, because uh, we chugged beers after every city goal. Yes, sir. And uh, we both showed up to this podcast empty handed. Yeah. This, we did a, the first half was a dry podcast. And then at halftime, we. Went to the Seven Eleven, got a six pack, came back. the The game had already started, and Holland already scored. Yeah. So City went up three two, and we weren't even there. We yeah. were the we were still alive, but there was no one there. And then we showed up, and then Holland scores. The second half looked promising. Yes. And then, unfortunately, last minute penalty, and with Cole Palmer making that uh, goal, what a what a little traitor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the game ends four four. So, well, uh, what stood out to you in this game and how we lined up? Man, Jeremy Doku looked so good until he wasn't. It felt like he was doing too much towards the end. And, uh, you know, we praise, we praise Jeremy Doku in this podcast. But um, they should have kept him in because he was doing way better than Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish looked like he was struggling out there in the rain. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And then... Uh, Doku got subbed off uh, uh, for simulation. He got uh, uh, oh yeah, the yellow card. Pep was not liking that. Yeah, and so uh, Pep subbed him off, and then Grealish uh, came on around the seventy third minute, I believe. Yes, sir. And uh, so this the the way we lined up. I mean, obviously having Rodri in is uh, is crucial for us. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, it just seems like the. The top six teams, whenever whatever form they're in coming into the city, and they always manage to find some kind of form when they're playing us. Yeah, you know Chelsea has had an abysmal season. They've had an abysmal run in these last few games. They did de- they beat Tottenham, mm-hmm. uh, you know at uh, at Spurs, and then they come into this game and they always kind of find a form when they're playing us. Plus playing away at Stamford Bridge, they're on their home territory. Yeah, they somehow uh, find a form and give us a run for our money, and they did. And it was an exciting game. I'm I'm not gonna knock it, you know. It's I don't have. There's not really any negative. It's a high scoring game. There's plenty of goals to watch. Plenty of great goals to watch. You know, you just could have wished that this should have been a team we steamrolled, right? Yeah. This should have been a team uh, that we that we beat. Uh, and our predictions are completely off. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, including uh, Mr. George Aldapa from Bit of Banter who yes, joined sir. us for the preview uh, preview podcast and was on the live. Uh, to uh, <laughs> to share his thoughts along the way, but con- at convenient times, right? Yeah. So he would some sometimes conveniently drop off, and then he would come <laughs> back whenever Chelsea did something good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just said, uh, "Like, hey, why do you keep coming back?" He's like, "I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that." Yeah. Did you guys see that? <laughs> just want to make sure you guys saw that. But and, uh, finally, uh, a guest successful against us. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a sense, yeah. Yeah. A, 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 a draw. We didn't that, have nobody for Arsenal to represent, so that's do you, good. Do you, so you, you're you're saying that this draw kind of feels like a loss, in a way, because I was not expecting a loss. I thought a guaranteed win was going to happen today, yeah. especially against a team like Chelsea. But Chelsea in the past two three weeks have been uh, showing a little bit of muscle, and like today, you know, we had uh, let's look at we had Halan in the 25th minute for the penalty kick. Yeah, 
And then these guys, and then what? Tiago Silva with the header from uh, assist from Gallagher. And we had uh, Raheem Sterling, who was playing with hate towards us today. Yeah. You know what you, I mean? You can feel the, 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 the hate towards us. You know what I mean? And then we tie it right before the half with an Akaji header. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I rate the defense's performance really poorly this game. Um, I just don't think we played that well on defense. Obviously, we conceded four goals. Yeah. Um, and you see once again some uh, a couple of mistakes from Ruben. Yeah. And then Whoa. you also see um, the one that comes to mind for me is when Gavardio was chasing someone down the wing. Yeah. And the they the the they kicked the ball and he blocked it, but it set up the pass to Raheem Sterling for him to score the goal. Yeah. And he finished. So and they finished. So it, I don't necessarily see his defensive mistake. It's just he was just kind of in a awkward position they just kind of used them as a as like kind of like a off the heezy kind of thing you know yeah, what i mean yeah so um you know i but it's just i the, what we didn't do well on defense i just feel like sometimes there are some really critical mistakes kyle walker the handball was uh, oh. we got away with murder on that yeah we did get yeah and like i could just see instances of a few mistakes from each of our defenders really maybe not a kanji i think kanji had a pretty good game obviously scored a goal yeah you know but like uh walker diaz and gavardio had had noticeable very noticeable mistakes that could have um that didn't help us uh you know what i mean our three strongest defenders yeah <laughs> but uh we had an interesting uh conversation after the uh after the game on the ig live and uh, lee house who is the author of a uh the no gallagher book uh, mm. uh listen you'll hear us singing mentioned that gavardio's that's not gavardio's natural position oh yeah he played as a center back at rb leipzig and he plays as a center back for croatia and he's playing on the left wing, which really raises an, impo- uh, an interesting question: Is who would you want to see playing on the left wing, Gavardio or Ake? Ake, dude. Ake, that's <clears throat> that's his spot, dude. That's that's his bread and butter. You know what I mean? And uh, today, seeing Gavardio playing in that position today, uh, I don't know. He just kept getting he kept getting led on, dude. Like he was chasing all these players, and we looked unorganized you know what i mean yeah like the, the raheem was cutting through us like nothing brother you know and uh for tiago silva to find a fucking uh to find a header between all those three guys and these guys are we're talking like six something you know what i mean yeah it's not a not a very 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 uh good vision to see so i mean but the good thing is like when we came back from the second half you know Holland with the fucking goal in the 47th minute 56 minute Doku gets subbed out. That's when that happened. And uh, did he try to sell a flop in the box? I mean, it didn't look that obvious, but for the ref to give you a yellow, you're messing with his... uh, Good graces. Yeah, exactly. So, And Pep was not feeling that shit. Yeah, Pep Pep was not going to have any of it. And he was scolding him on the way out. Yeah. He like like a school teacher, right? Like he was just you know kind of um, admonishing him to not do that uh, for the future, right? Because you yeah. need Doku, and you don't want to see him get like red card and stuff like that, and have a suspension and whatnot. It just just gets uh, tricky. But um, I, I like to come back to Raheem Sterling because he did have a great game against us today. Yeah. And I said this on the live that Jeremy Do- the way Jeremy Do- Jeremy Doku is playing is how Raheem Sterling should have played. Oh or- yeah what he wishes he could have played like at, at city at city right and um i was mentioning on this and we had a little conversation with patrick from bit of banter that uh for in my opinion ryan Sir- getting rid of raheem sterling was necessary for us to have our trouble season yeah i just think that you know it, he plays well during the season but in the big games doesn't show up and he just has absolute you know just drops and lays an egg in the big games right yeah so I think it was necessary to get, to get rid of him and seeing how his quality has been this year, you know, it just it re- keeps reinforcing that idea, but he did come out. He can come out and he can ball and he did today. Yeah. And you can see how he was playing on the pitch. Right. I think he even threw an elbow at someone like he like kind of low key got away with it, but like <laughs> he threw an elbow. I think it might've been you know, Rodri or he, he, he knocked someone down. Uh, but he kind of like just, it was like this tussle and maybe accidental, but he looked like he threw an elbow at someone. Yeah. So like he was, he was playing with um, with a vengeance, but like, um, but in my opinion, letting him go was necessary. Yeah, I mean, yeah, towards the end he wasn't showing up. So, but I mean, for him to be playing for Chelsea and 
performing like this against big teams, fuck, you know, maybe he's the he uh, he's waking up. I'm pretty sure he reads criticism and everything. So you know, and today was the day to show off, I guess, what he can do. Yeah, you know. And Cole Palmer had to make that last penalty. How that's such a movie. That's such a movie. It's, it's so scripted. It's so scripted. Yeah. Because I, I would expect it, uh, Sterling or somebody else to fucking shoot that penalty. But the fact that Cole Palmer stepped up and did that to us, and he's on loan. You know, I thought he was going to fly it and be like, hell yeah, bring one for the boys, you know? Yeah. But nah, hell no. Nah. He fucking scored the shit out of that penalty. Yeah. You know, he didn't, he didn't celebrate, which was good. You know, he busted the, sorry guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. But. It's okay. All, all good to Cole Palmer, you know, becoming a better player. And, yeah, we ended in 4-4. We ended in 4-4. Yeah. So, um, who would you rate as a man of the match? Just because this is my guy and because he always gives us amazing fucking goals when it comes to Rockets, I would go with Rodri. Rodri? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly what Lee said on, on the podcast as solid well. Solid performance. Solid. Uh, solid. He did have that goal that got us to go ahead uh, at, at that one point when it was 4-3. And it was just like an unfortunate penalty that leveled the game, really. You know, if it wasn't for that conceding that penalty, we would have walked away with the uh, with a 4-3 victory, right? But Rodri always coming up big for us in, in big moments. And this Hell is why yeah. he's such a key player for us. I believe in the last how many matches? Uh, 28 matches he's undefeated. So, it, yeah, and, as we, and we also we talked about here on the podcast that not having him those two games when he was on a red card oh, yeah. uh, suspension, we lost those games. So it's he, this guy is like night and day critical for us. You know yeah. what I mean? Not having him is, um, you know, is, it sets our side for the worst, right? Mm -hmm. But um, today he hit that well-placed goal. I mean, Halan had the brace. He had a penalty and the goal. You know what I mean? So, you know, and... This is his first brace in how long? However long, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's been a while. You know what I mean? And uh, But, you know, he's still coming back in the form. We still love to see him get multiple goals in the Premier League. You know, and um, so, you know, I, I write Holland as uh, uh, as as the man, my man of the match. Um, still back to, back to scoring ways. Yeah. So, uh, and Kanji, you know, shout out to Kanji. He got a goal, too, with the, yeah. with the header. You know what I mean? So, um, and that was in the uh, extra time. Uh, uh, 45 plus one. So, um, you know, Akanji scoring goals with his head. Scored last game too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the two not bad. Consecutive games. So, um, yeah, you know, away at Stanford Bridge, it was, it was, you see it was raining. Oh, yeah. It got all super heavy at, towards the end. Yeah, dude. people were drenched, right? And then, um, you which, know. Which explains how we got that penalty because uh, I don't know who they subbed in. Uh, well, it's some new guy I've never seen before. Let's see if I can get his name here. Uh, this was uh, Broja. Broja for Caicedo. Yeah. And, man, the way the way Ruben Diaz slid with that wet grass, there was no way he was not going to hit him, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just something you can't control, especially when you have the pace and uh, aggressiveness to defend the fucking goal. He slid, and he just kept sliding, dude, and took his uh, his back foot. And, I mean, that was just an obvious fucking unfortunate penalty for us for us to concede, you know? You know? So, I don't know, man. It was just, I, I blame the rain. Yeah, and that was another moment where, you know, definitely that's the spot where Diaz made that mistake, right? Like, yeah. he came in, might have come in a little bit too hard, might have, could have just stood in front of him, could have just, you know, you know, got, like, blocked, you know, shifted around and maybe would have skied it or, you know, shot it, shot it wide. But, yeah, I just feel like even in the rain, Diaz should have never made that tackle. And, and what's up with Pep letting Kyle Walker shoot the ball from the set piece nowadays? Yeah, that was that was weird. Yeah, man, I I did not like that, dude. He could, I mean, like I think it that should have just been Foden all the way to do this, yeah, to do this set piece. Yeah. But then he lets Walker take it. It's like Walker taking a set piece. I've never really seen that, and I don't really wouldn't. Would, Power I, shot, yes. Finesse, no. Yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean. And in that instance, I remember we were saying, "Where's Julian Alvarez?" But he was subbed off. <laughs> he was subbed off. That you know should have I mean? been the man for that fucking yeah, set that, piece. That was the man for that. But I, even in that situation, I just wouldn't rate Foden Walker. High up the list of in terms of set free uh, set piece takers, right? Like, yeah, it you know if you had to list it out, it's like he's not very high up there. I would, say, I would have said Foden would be the next best choice in that situation. Yeah, without Alvarez on the pitch at that moment. So 
Um, any other thoughts about this game, Will? I mean, it's not a it's not an L, and we're still top of the league, so still. it's not that bad. Yeah, because I was wanting to get into some other games from around the league. So uh, Spurs <laughs> lost to Wolves two one. <laughs> Shout out Cameron. And shout out Cameron. Uh, yeah, that's two consecutive week, two consecutive losses in two consecutive weeks for for Spurs. United beat Luton Town one nil. Wow, good for you. The comebacks continue <laughs> with United. Um, Arsenal beat Burnley three one. Everton beat Crystal Palace three two. Bournemouth beat Newcastle two nil. That's huge. Uh, let's see. Brighton drew Sheffield United one one. West Ham beat Nottingham Forest three two. We were watching that before the game. And then Liverpool beat Brentford 3-0. And then we drew uh, Chelsea 4-4. So, any, we watching any of these other games, Will? Nah, dude. I I just only had a chance to watch the City game this weekend. Didn't really get a chance to watch any EPO games. But, uh, I mean, what a way to tune into a 4-4 game. I mean, I'm not going to say it was a bad game. It was a fucking action-packed game. But just not the result that we wanted. Yeah, I just feel like it's it still has this taste, a vibe of... Um, of a, of a loss for me really uh but you know but with that with that point puts us a point ahead in the league man city liverpool man city with 28 points liverpool and arsenal tied with 27 and tottenham with 26 it goes back to the days of yeah 20, 2017 2018 2019 yeah the rivalry the old school rivalry the, the, the old school rivalry is coming back and uh but uh so how do you what do you make of this race so far i mean l- was a Jurgen Klopp is fucking happy as hell right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially uh, be, being eliminated out of the Europa from Toulouse. You know, I don't know how do you pronounce that. No, he, there's, they're still in the group stage. Oh, they're still in the group stage. They, they lost in the group stage to Toulouse, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's not that good. But, I mean, if that goes wrong, I mean, now he has something. He has a good, he has a, a horse in the race in the EPL. You know what I mean? Yeah, in, you know, like, remember that one point last season? Around the same time, or maybe a little bit earlier in the season, in September of last year, he, his job security was on the line. Yeah. You remember that when when it was like that, like, firings were happening all around the league? Yeah. Chelsea fired. I forgot who's it was. Uh, who was the coach? Tuchel. Oh, yeah. They fired Tuchel, and then it looked like Jurgen Klopp was next. Yeah. And, like, and I, feel, I have a feeling like he was getting his blasting box ready, you know what I mean, like, to, to go. But held on to his job, and... <clears throat> Now they've come back this season, and now they're they're fighting for the title. You know what I mean? Can't say that about United, but uh, you know, but uh, you know, they're 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 back in it now, and so you know that's <clears throat> maybe uh, reinforces or puts re- restores some faith in Jurgen Klopp as coach at Liverpool. Well, uh, good thing. I mean, it's crazy to see these standings that we're looking at right now. Uh, I mean, Man City first, second Liverpool, Arsenal in third. Tottenham in fourth, Villa somehow in fifth, and United starting to look a little better in that... sixth place above uh, Newcastle and Brighton. Wait, what was that bet that you made again? Oh, yeah, that uh, I bet my friend Tony, United fan, that uh, a jersey that uh, United wouldn't make it a top three. So make it top three. So, so you're still winning that bet right yeah now. as okay. of right now i'm expecting another jersey at the end of the season yeah i don't see them finishing in the top three i think city i mean i think the top four right now is going to be interchanging over the course of this probably next, next this part of the season man city liverpool arsenal same Tottenham. four yeah same four you know what i mean um i think city though hope we'll find like full find the stride and then start getting a, a gap in that you know what i mean because right now the lead's only one point we could have had a three-point lead yeah but couldn't get it done today, but I, I do see like it, this is kind of a, a four horse race right now. Liverpool's behind by one point. Yeah, shit's gonna get crazy. Yeah, uh, don't don't we have a game ahead with them? We do. We play Liverpool. Uh, so there's so following this game. There's gonna be an international break, and then we play them at the weekend after Thanksgiving. Wow. So that would mean it's it's on the twenty sixth. Damn, shit's getting crazy now. So that also gets us into our preview or of the next game. Yeah. Well, the the just to kind of throw it out, advertise. Yeah. Why can I come up with my words today? Advertise for our next live stream meetup. Uh, we are going to meet up live for the City Liverpool game. The game is at home. It's at the Etihad. 
and uh, Ooh, it's yes. a but it's a early kickoff. I believe it's a four thirty kickoff. Shit. Yeah. Okay. So it's like one of we have like two four thirty kickoffs. We have one against Liverpool, and then we have, I think we have one in the spring against Brighton. Oh wow. And, and so, uh, but. We're gonna do a preview podcast bef- the week the the Monday before the game. Yes, and we'll have two special guests on. My friend Karen Kay from Orange County Soccer Club, who is a Liverpool fan and yeah. watch supports with OC Liverpool. Yes, and my girlfriend, uh, who is a Liverpool fan, and <laughs> she will be on the podcast. Uh, and th- they're two friends; they know each other as well. Yeah. <clears throat> they go back and then, uh, but uh, they'll be on the podcast to talk Liverpool stuff. And nice. Uh, join us in our um, in our preview podcast, and then uh, yeah, maybe the live stream uh, or follow up yeah. uh, uh, in the follow up podcast. Nice. So um, yeah, our first two Liverpool fans. We haven't had Liverpool fans on the podcast. We had we had Tony on last year, but uh, yeah, it's and, pretty and United. Cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we haven't had a Chelsea fan. Yeah, you said you had a Chelsea fan, Chelsea friend fan, right? Uh, yeah, but. Um... Now that they suck, he's supporting more of a Serie A team now. Uh, is that Inter? Yeah. Oh, is that that one fan? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah my so friend J Rock. Yeah. But I mean, like I say, I don't. I tell him, hey man, I don't blame you. I would jump ship too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially because so, yeah. it's Chelsea, dude. Fuck that team. You know what I mean? But uh, it's just, yeah, it, it's cool to have uh, these people, our guests, just come in and represent their team that they like and see if they want if they can beat us or not. Yeah, you know, and get their two cents about it. Yeah. I love that shit. I love that shit. Yeah, it was fun having George on the podcast. Shout yes. out from George from Bit of Banter. Bit of Banter. And, um, there might have been some technical things with the IG live. I think next time yeah. I'm not gonna use Wi-Fi for that. So because it, it was cutting it, cutting out for some reason. Yeah. But uh, but it was good to have him. You know, and uh, we'll have him on again sometime this spring. And or when we play him on the reverse fixture, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone that was tuning in. We had about sixty people yeah. join the the live. Yes, and we were doing other individual lives as well. Um, uh, Will over here was doing his own, and then uh, we had that one guy from Hardy Bucks join. Oh, Stephen Cowboy Kelly! Damn, what a crazy ass fucking damn! That one was watching our live. So shout out the Hardy Bucks, Stephen Cowboy Kelly. Follow him on Instagram. Irish is funny as uh, Ireland's fucking finest. Just check him out, man. That shit was funny. But yeah, that's so cool that I can't believe he was watching our live. Good crack, right? Yeah. Um, so he might be our first celebrity ever to join the <laughs> right there. And we were even mentioning in the game, like we we're just kind of setting goals for ourselves. But our goal is to get Michael Richards on the oh, uh, on the live. Man, that would be awesome. Dude. That would be yeah. To get his laugh on the, the how how he does that laugh. <laughs> 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 yeah, and. Uh, uh, we talked to Lee House, uh, who is an author from England, mm-hmm. Man City fan, and he recently released a book uh, full of Oasis and Noel Gallagher lyrics with illustrations. Okay. And um, uh, it's a good book. Uh, it reminds me that I need to go get my own copy of it. Nice. Um, but he's had some interesting moments here on the podcast that he uh, – that, uh, he, it got into Noel Gallagher's hands, and he's read the book. Oh shit! Um, and that he's connected with management, similar management with uh, Phil Foden. I believe there's going to be a Phil Foden. He's oh, that's right. Then the new year, he's going to be doing something with uh, collaboration with Phil Foden, and then um, yeah. So uh, go to uh, at Noel Gallagher book to uh, see his links to to pick up a copy. If you're, uh, I'm sure you're an Oasis fan. If you're a Man City fan. And buy the book, and I will be getting my copy here as well. Nice. Uh, we appreciate everyone that comes on our live streams, and uh, shout out all of our supporters, uh, including Man City MCFC military veterans, and um, you know all of our all of our friends of the podcast that joined along the way. You yeah. Know what I mean, so uh, Will, are there any final final thoughts before we sign off? Uh, I hope these boys stay healthy during the international break. Because yeah. the last thing we need is uh, injuries. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, hopefully they come back hungry because we need to beat Liverpool when we come back. I mean, we also didn't like to mention this, that Stones is injured again. Mm, okay. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, when are we having our first match for uh, the Club of World Cups? Uh, that's in December. I, I have to check to see when, okay. when that is. Because we still have that too. It'll be a two week, uh, a two week thing. Uh, I'm pulling up the schedule. As oh, nice. Speak. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 
Club World Cup semifinals December nineteenth. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, that will be happening closer to Christmas, and then that's the only scheduled one so far for that. Uh, we have Liverpool when we come back on Saturday, November twenty fifth. Yeah. Could make a correction to that, and then the week after we play Leipzig. We're finishing off the the Champions League group stage, and then we play Tottenham at home on December 3rd. So that means that we'll be having Cam and Greg Linton nice. of the podcast on there and joining us for that. Decent kickoff time, 8.30. And then we go in, yeah, you know, so we have Champions League, we have World Club, World Cup, and um, yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, quite a congested December, if, if I may say. But um, yeah, so, um, you know, Liverpool is going to be a, a, a test next. Revitalize Liverpool coming back. <clears throat> Once again, we will be going live for that on Saturday, November 25th at 8.30. And we'll be doing the preview pod on the Monday with uh, Karen Kay and my uh, girlfriend, Jessica. Ooh. So, um, uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm on a lot of I'm on a lot of, uh, points. Where, where can you find us, dude? Where do you find? Oh yes, that's a good thing. You can find us at Hollywood Kitbacks, K I P P A X across all social media platforms: Facebook, Twitter, IG, and TikTok. And uh, yeah, follow us all there for all of our shenanigans. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, you know building the podcast. We had actually had we did have some uh, pretty big milestones in the last week. Uh, we've reached out to noisy neighbors. Yep. Um, and we are eventually going to go on a call in show at some point. Yes. With noisy neighbors, noisy neighbors being the number one Man City podcast in the United States. Yes. I uh, love JT and Mulv. Um, <clears throat> they're the inspiration for me to start this podcast. You know, I, I listen to Man City podcasts. I do enjoy listening to their, their podcast. Oh, and we made the list. And we made the list. So according to Feedspot, a independent podcast rating website, we are ranked number three in the Man City podcast space. Um, I'm not sure how accurate that is. We'll take a win. You know, we'll take a podium finish whenever it's given to us. Yeah. But, um, you know, like I, you know, a shout out to Esteem Company. Yes. Uh, who I've reached out uh, to City Report Pod and Amos, who does a weekly uh, episode on Man City. Uh, so the, they're grinders, man. And then uh, Noisy Neighbors, kind of a similar one podcast episode per uh, per week. And, um, and then there's us and Shades of Blue and Bit of Banter. You know, we it, we support all podcasts, right? But according to the Feast Bob website, we're third. Yeah. And uh, we're behind 9320, which is another podcast that in I... In the UK. In the UK that I do. Like, probably the best Man City podcast in the UK. Yeah. And then then there's the official Man City podcast. So, technically, we're we're second to behind the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, so, you know, I'm not I'm not going to put much talk into it. But, hey, third place finish, that's, good, that, that's made me uh, float on cloud nine this week. Yeah. Uh, but reaching out to City Report Pod and... Those neighbors and making those kitchen. We're nearing 500 followers on Instagram, so um, nice. We're we're growing, right? So um, that being said, this has been an episode of the Hollywood Kickbacks Podcast, and mm-hmm. your co-host Alex Miller joined with me as always is Will Lopez. Yeah, if Kiss was here and he had to step out though to go see a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, uh, we know who's the wrestler. I, uh, I think it was a uh, Scotty Too Hotty or something like that. Scotty Too Hotty. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, if Kislovs is wrestling, and yes. he was like, at, after the live watch, he was like, all right, I'm going to go, yeah, and yeah, go yeah. see this wrestler over here at this wrestling shop uh, off Atlantic. And we're like, okay, dude. And we were like, are you going to come back? Uh, no, I'm still online. It's like, yeah. all right, dude, we'll do the podcast out, out to you. So, but he was here for the live watch along, so he does, yes. get, he does get marked present for attendance. Yes, yes, you yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So, uh, and we appreciate him when, when he is on the podcast. But we'll, we will be live streaming again for the Liverpool match on Saturday, November 25th. And then uh, preview podcast the week before, so look out for those things. Yes, sir. Once again, this has been an episode of the Hollywood Kickbacks podcast. Uh-huh. Come on, City. City. Come, come on, City. Come on, City. You know. Uh, yeah, come on. You know it's going to be biblical, man. <laughs> Cheers. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your international break. We'll see you for Liverpool. Oh,